into the MDL Dota 2 CIS qualifiers. It is the major that's coming up very shortly, but it's also going to be game number three, Navi versus SM and winner takes all, not really all, but winner moves on and gets a first round by in the playoff stage, which is really, really important. I'm Lyrical joins well by the wonderful Draskal. Andy, they got their ET, it's happening. You know, to be fair, they didn't actually ban ET in the first three last game. Uh, Navi banned the Fury on instead. And they, they stuck to that. They've banned, I think, the exact same uh, heroes, uh, second and third game both. So, yeah, the ET comes out. I think this is definitely a comfort zone pick. I would say that the Tusk performance was a bit lackluster for me personally. Though I do think that it was kind of a hard game to play Tusk because their other support was a Rubik. Uh, but, yeah, the, the ET, Valier definitely plays the crap out of this hero. So, I think you're already getting things off to a good start. Now, in response, Navi take the Rubik. I really like this. No field probably one of the better ways to help mitigate the damage that Elder Titan does with his uh, aura, um, which we saw used to really good effect in game number one. Um, so I think that already this is a, a much better draft just with like this opening, a much better response for them than we saw Five previously. Seconds remaining. Yeah, I mean, I think that draft-wise, last game, Navi definitely had the advantage. But for whatever reason, I always look at SM's drafts, you know, the last two days, and I always think that they're slightly outdrafted to really outdrafted and they still managed to make the game close yeah so I'm, I'm always kind of on the side of like i want the the team with the better draft to show that the, the why the better draft should win but i don't feel like that's what happened last game i feel like navi had the the better draft but won because sm made some really questionable choices yeah that was what was nuts like you have this game that's so free for the morph lane, but the lanes go quite well. And then Dyer like one or two pickoffs, bad decisions as far as where everybody's going. And then SM just like completely fell apart. That was one of the fastest, like, I don't know, fall apart moments. I'm not sure what the word is for that that I've seen in a Dota game in a really long time. They're going to take the Death Prophet this time, though. So I already have like a semi savvy type of hero with the ET combo together with that DP. Yeah, I, I think that pretty much ET anything is going to be like a strong opener more or less now, especially with a, a hero that's just ambiguously strong as Death Prophet. We even saw last game, like Dendi just went to the off lane, didn't even care. It's like, I don't need to be in the mid lane. I just, uh, I need to be in a matchup where I'm going to be favored. And they managed to set up the lanes in a way where, seconds, you know, it was right? good enough for them to be able to, to take the W on the side of Navi. So Five this time around, looks like it's going to be in SM's hands, but... The, the Sanking coming out again, uh, I really like this hero on Navi. They have two fairly capable players on it. Uh, I still like General a bit more on the hero. I think he just has that that sense, you know, just really good game sense of when he can go in where he needs to be. Right. And team I think that back. he's probably Die on his team. team, he is definitely the best at it. So I kind of hope to see him on that hero this game. Yeah, LeBron really struggled in that game number one Sand King performance. Granted, it was against a, a lineup that was tough to play Sand King against. Uh, so many Yule Scepters and stuff, and um, I think there are a couple of different ways to like break Blink Daggers and things. But regardless, Disruptor remaining. is going to be banned out, so not going to see him in this game. I think that's the first time, Five seconds maybe, remaining. if I'm not mistaken. I think that he was on uh, SM's team in game number one. Radiant so. team. I think it's the first time today we haven't seen him, because in the last <laughs> period, it was so Disruptor, right? Yeah, I think so, too. All over the damn place. They're going to go back to the IO. Felt like it All right, was nice. Solid. General Sand King, let's go. That's my boy. I like this though, because the Ten the IO allows you to play in a very unique manner. And it's it's such an enabling hero. Five like you can go back for a hero like Storm if you want. You can pick just any mid hero, any core, and IO is still gonna match up well with it because no one hates mobility and just being healed all the time. Right. Like every single hero in the game is gonna be okay with that. Even more so if your hero is also mana dependent. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you saw IO all the freaking time. And it would always be picked with heroes like Storm Spirit, for example, just because that hero requires mass so much and that you needed to farm and you needed to fight. And uh, that was just something that people did. So, get another, uh, another chance to the Willow. I think I sent play this yesterday too, right? I think they, so. They did pick the Willow third. Yeah, I, I think so. There was also the Zayats that was doing it as well. Um, Radiant team pick. But obviously moved on. Life Stealer is going to be taken now, so Infest Ganks can become even more potent with uh, Relocate or just the Blink Dagger on Sand King. 
I'm kind of wondering right now, like where where you want to go if you're your SM, because on Dying some hands they're kind of lacking a bit of damage. They're just gonna go straight for troll. Okay. Well, there's your damage. Yeah. You got that pretty much as a one pick, and uh, the life stealer combo I, with the the sand king and stuff in the IO, I think just means that they want to fight. They do need an actual hero that goes in though, because prior to blink sand king. Nothing on the Senate Navi really initiates. So who's your vessel? Like, who's the one that you want to infest and, like, go in? Because right now, if, if it's just the Io and tethering to, like, Ten the Lifestealer, you're only bringing two heroes. But you, you ideally want to bring three. Because you can just infest Five the one first, and then the Io is tethered, then reload, and then you have a three-man gang instead of two. So I'm, I'm thinking that the last hero is going to either have some kind of built-in blink or be a hero that can actually go in. All right, you ready for it? Here we go. You switch it up. You take yourself an Earth Spirit right now, Dendi Rubik. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> that is, like, crazy all-in, but I, I'm a fan. Yeah. You know, just get as many kills as you can as fast as humanly possible. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see it. It would be fun. Yeah. I don't know if it's good, but <laughs> it's definitely something that would be interesting to see. Okay, they're actually just going to ban out the Viper. Hmm. They're real scared of the, the Dondo Viper, apparently. Makes it look good. It's not hard to do it with that hero nowadays. Heroes feels feels a lot better, I think, in some ways. It didn't look oh, great he's, he's definitely better. Yeah. It's uh, The other thing, too, is they beat it already. They beat yeah. it in the first game. Five yeah, that's remaining. a bit of a different one. Maybe they feel like this lineup isn't as good at dealing with the Viper as game number one was. Well, they don't have like a tremendous amount of lockdown. Willow and NET is like a decent, a decent bit, but maybe they also just don't want to play uh, the troll against it because the Viper Strike really hurts that hero a lot. You want to be able to get around the fights. You want to be able to hit your targets, and the Viper Strike can just be a complete nuisance because even with BKB, you're still going to get slowed. Yeah. So it's uh, it is a little bit uh, troublesome for him. I would say Tiny, but it's such a terrible matchup against the Life Stealer. A lot of those heroes that. You know, you might want to help with the burst damage or... I mean, what is it that you feel like they really need now at this point for SM? I would like to see, like, Bat or something. Okay. I think Bat is, like, super strong in this game. I mean, sure, there, there's two really fast stuns, but you want a hero that's going to be able to initiate and also provide vision. Clockwork's not good against Lifestealer. Bat doesn't necessarily beat the Lifestealer in lane, but he'll at least be able to farm a jungle. And then he'll be able to like get a, a blink or something or dramas, whatever build, and then, and then just go from there. But I don't know if they play it. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, I think Bat's one of those heroes where you really need to be experienced on the hero in order to field it. And I'm just not sure if that they have that team. Particularly against the Life a tough matchup Dying for that hero. Team. So they're going to go for the Legion, Legion Commander. Commander. Another BKB piercing disable. And Navi now with one final pick, trying to move on to the playoffs in the upper side of the brackets. You know, I like Legion Commander as a hero, but I'm, uh, I mean, I guess it's okay because in the lane, you can just purge off the, the open Five wounds if they decide to go remaining. on you. And you know, the Sand King is going to be offline anyway. So what, you're against Rubik, Io, support, so Lysail? Yeah, I, th I think it's passable. He should have a pretty okay lane. Okay. Navi running through it. Their last little bits of time for what they want to take. Most likely that Dendi hero. Other ones, the, the, like the Lina that he used to play a lot, could be good against the DP for burst damage. Might be too squishy, though, against, like, Legion Troll. To be fair, everything is squishy against Legion Troll. <laughs> I mean, that's... Late game, you, you're just going to splat. There's not really much you can do about it. Yeah. They're definitely thinking it over, though. All right, who else is available? I still want to see them pick some kind of initiator. I know General is, is a great sanking player, and he'll probably get a decently timed blink, like 15 minutes or something, but... I mean, the other route is, like, going for delaying the game, maybe. I don't even know if that's great, though. It's like Tinker or something, go for, like, Ultra Mobility, but that doesn't sound amazing either. They could go for another hero that just hits buildings. Maybe they go back for the Sniper like they did yesterday. It's going to be a Pugna. Oh, he's a building hitter, just not Sniper. That's actually really good. Because, like, uh, the troll is very single target oriented, so is the Legion. So when someone gets dueled, you, you can pretty much just decrep them, and the, unless the Willow is, like, right there, or there's a Death Prophet to throw out a Crypt Swarm or something, they're just not going to take that much damage. 
It's a definitely a solid pick. It's a pretty good matchup against a Death Prophet in mid because Pugna has 630 attack range. He's got really good base damage, high end game. He's fast as crap. It is so hard to gank that hero because he runs at like three, I think it's, it's 325 or 335. It's one of the two. Those but little he just get working. Dude, he's he's like Speedy Gonzalez. He's just <laughs> he's all over the place. Well, I, I like the pick. Um I think the thing again that I worry about for Pugna is if he's the one that gets dueled, uh little skeleton man's gonna be broken to bones. But still a lot of potential here for this Navi team and we'll have to see how it all works out. As far he's as still yeah. I was gonna say you still got two quick stuns and a relo, so if, yeah. if you're like really on the ball, you can save the Pugna. And I, I'm pretty sure he buys the Lincolns this game. It's like really value. Uh, probably not first, obviously, but you know, at some point he'll he'll probably contemplate either that or, or AM disc is really good too okay. against these types of teams. Because against dual especially, not only does it prevent you from taking damage for two and a half seconds, but it gives you status for this. And the status just lowers the duration of the duel by twenty five percent just by itself. Ooh. So you're pretty much just negating like what, 90% of the duel right there? Yeah. I mean, it, there's potential that it gets popped and then, like, you know, it's the very long cooldown for it. But uh, certainly could be strong, you know, in the right situation. And all you need is one fight in the late game to make sure that the duel doesn't kill you at their duration. So, well, movement down now towards the bottom lane. They do have a Burrow Strike available if they want to see if they can find somebody with this. Looks like they're already in a position, and you may. Smoke breaks, they spot him out. There's the lift back, the burrow strike through, and a nice little bit of damage there. But guess what? Dark Willow's just gonna walk away. What other hero can actually just walk away like that? This is wild that he's able to live. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Uh, at the very least, they're gonna see the movement as far as like who's gonna be down here bottom and maybe can make some lane adjustments. Is there any lane that you really hate to go up against right now for SM? Uh, let's see. Who has the worst matchup? I think their lanes, for the most part, are actually fine. Like, the Sand King and the Isle lane might be a, a bit of a nuisance, but to be honest, since you're not laning against it as a melee hero, it, it doesn't really matter that much, because the biggest threat for, from that is Caustic, right? Oh, dude, yeah. Yeah. And then you have an ET uh, Legion against Lifestealer. That's fine. And then you yes, got, uh, I guess the DP's lane is probably the one that's going to be the hardest, because he's against a hero that has, like, the the mobility and the, the auto attack range that outranges hers, and you can also pretty easily dodge Crypt Swarm, and plus he's going to have a, a hero going for a courier snipe too, so yeah, mid's probably going to be the lane that suffers. Okay. A second uh, Sentry Ward is going to be brought out as well, since the Dark Willow missed the pull camp block, and looks like he will be brought out in time for him to get it, maybe? Goes into the Shadow Realm again, they back out, give him one little more, hey, how you doing, on the back side of General. Yeah, these lands are, are pretty much going to be fine, I think, for SM. That being said, it's not like Navi is going to get stomped in any of them. I think that top lane is probably going to be the worst of it, just because right now it's a solo life stealer against a, a Legion and an ET, which is definitely not a winning lane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see how long LeBron waits for this courier snipe. Okay, he's decided <laughs> to just back out. Yeah. That one hurts. His, his life stealer sitting there like, please, man, come top. This is so bad. I need heroes. There's a freaking legion here. I don't want to fight against this guy 1v1 in the ET. Yeah, and I mean, the unfortunate thing about it too is that they're probably going to be pulling something out in the courier right about now uh, for the Death Prophet. Well, maybe not. Still a little ways away from it. But Dendi's doing a, an okay time here against the DP. 6-0 and versus 3-0, and although that creep wave is going to be pushing in towards them. Well, the weird part about LeBron deciding to TP then is I'm, I'm like pretty sure the, the ward... Oh, it was on the low ground. Yeah, it's ground. on the low ground. I was going to say, I could swear that I was going to see it, but yeah, I, I didn't notice that it was like right below the bush. Because if you had seen the courier walking back, then you have to assume it's going to go mid next. Right. So this lane, uh, or this ward rather, should probably get taken down. So Willow's going to be able to get a little bit of extra experience and also regen from her tango here. And... That's almost level two. That's pretty big. Like these heroes, they're not, they're less than halfway to level two. Although the creep wave is pushing, so it might be tough for them to find any type of a kill. 
Yeah, I don't know if much is gonna happen really in any lane. Ah. Gonna punch crystallized a few times, but yeah. LeBron can't even really stop this. Like, all he has to offer is a lift. This is a really weak lane. Even this is the, the suffering of a Rubik support, man. Yeah. You, for the first couple levels, you just don't do anything. Yeah, okay, bottom lane, they're actually getting right. first board. How did so. they kill the Sand King? Brambles, Root, Camp Burrow Strike, I guess. And then maybe a Bash in there. Yeah, but he would have had to have been super low beforehand, so he needed to eat like a ton of spells and then also be out of position. Yeah. I don't know, because the, the level 1 root only roots for one second. Yeah, it looks like he burrow striked one time and wasn't able to live through it still. Um, Alright, well, they get the kill. And all made possible because of that D ward from the Willow to get the experience. Better than expected, at least, at the start. Yeah, I mean, I knew the lane wouldn't be bad against uh, the Sanking and the Io for sure, because it's double range, basically. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't really expect them to get a kill either. That is definitely a, a surprise and a, a welcome one for SM. Yep. And now the Dark Willow can just kind of constantly pull. The troll isn't under any pressure here at all, really. And this is going to be really quite good for that Dark Willow, just getting all that experience early on. Uh, something that you desperately need on this hero. I mean, it is kind of bad that he died, but at the same time, if you look at the CS, like, General still got 12 creeps. Like, he, he's pretty much at the same CS, if not a tiny bit better than the troll. Right. So he'll still have a decently timed blink, which is really all that matters. If you really want that vessel for the, the life stealer to be able to infest into for your mid game, allow that hero to to help you win some team fights. But still, troll getting farm is, uh, is always going to be nice, too. Still pressuring with Crystallize there. They're going to be able to connect this pull onto the stacked up camp. And it looks like Lifestealer's still feeling comfortable just trading hits with these guys here. Mid lane continuing to be pretty much a wash between these two. There's little decrep outplays that you can go, but Crypt Swarm last hitting is also pretty effective every now and then. Yeah, the difference is that Pugna is going to be able to out sustain mana. Just because of his, his sheer in gain, he's going to have more regen. His total mana pool is going to be bigger. And plus, his, ma his nuke doesn't cost as much mana either. That's pretty big. Illusion. Oh, Bounty Rune picked up Radiance by the Dark Willow. Lil's going to get the other one, refilling the bottle. And now, Sand King trying to get some of these last hits with Caustic and two points in Burrow Strike. Needs to be a little bit concerned about his movement as the Cursed Crown is going to come out. Does still have that Burrow. But they catch him there and force him back. So yeah, not really too much like crazy stuff happening in any of the lanes. Just a, a heck of a lot of farming. I think before we really see any big rotations, like General, he's going to want his blink. Uh, we want Reload to come out on the side of Navi. If anything, I think that Dendi would be the one to move because he wants to be able to kill a tier one. But I don't even know if he would leave his lane, because if he does, the DP is just going to pop ult herself and take his tower. Yeah. Very, very static so far. Uh, something that kind of gone back and forth. Game 1 was a bloodbath. Game 2 was definitely much more along this pace of it. Um, Let's go make a mix. But maybe a little bit of a missed opportunity, not having the ability to pressure this, this troll Willow more with the IO Sand King. Uh, top lane, they managed to find a stomp here. Gonna try and get some damage onto LeBron and see if they can run him down. The open wounds onto the Legion means that she's gonna fall. And LeBron just gonna skitter out of there. Getting punched. Has the stomp available as well as the aura. And, oh. oh, nice try. They do get that kill. <laughs> Still, not great losing the Legion. Yeah, he didn't have a stick or anything, so instead of being able to get like a little burst of mana to be able to use the uh, press the attack on himself, he was just completely oomed, and he couldn't uh, couldn't remove the, the uh, open wounds. Well, drops a nice ward in there. He's getting ready to maybe go for a tether play, I guess. They're wrapping around with the Rubik. This would be pretty cool if they could get it, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And instead. The Dark Willow is going to spot out Lil. First crown. There's going to be the root as well. They do have a DD down here. Now they get the silence, and that should be the finish. Can't even get out the decrep. They decide to use it instead on the Dark Willow. They might have been able to kill the, uh, or keep alive the Io there. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it, 
he might have died anyway, just because even if he gets decrept, there's a chance that there's a range on the crypt swarm. Okay. And he doesn't have boots, so he's really, really slow. Three to two early on. Phase boots for Mr. Troll Warlord. Just continuing to taunt. We've kind of devolved into a different state where there's three mid now. Trying to mess around with Dendi a little bit, I guess, or at least keep the Death Prophet alive. This is a, a pretty much no way kill unless you have the, the Willow. Yeah. Like, you need that third hero because the Death Prophet doesn't offer any any real crowd control, and that goes stop is only going to CC for like a second or two once you start dealing damage. Throw strike again onto the troll. He's trying to force away a little. Meanwhile, Dendi able to take down Sashlo in the top. A big rotation there. Just by virtue of the TP, or just walked there. Okay. Yeah, I guess he was, uh, like behind the tower, maybe trying to TP out, and then he was just walking up there and smashed. Fine. Oh, Burrow strike, maybe a bit too bold as they go forward for this one. Lil trying to make his way through the brambles. Not gonna happen, and now General also in some trouble, though they might be able to kill off the Troll Warlord. Super low, and he is gonna die. And now with these Caustics going, Epicenter as well. General trying to take a little bit of revenge from last game, and is gonna be able to find a double kill. He has another Burrow strike up, and ends up hitting it onto the Willow. LeBron goes back in again. Kind of damage, but not quite enough. As he's gonna move forward, Radiant's looks for another tower, initiation here. Attack. You may hide in the trees. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That was a big play there. Oh my God! Is he actually pulled the spirits in and didn't see him? General would have gotten a stun and another kill there. Lil didn't walk to the right. Like they knew the Willow was in the tree line, but they didn't scan and they didn't like use the spirits to, to get the vision and top lane looks like the the life stealer is going to be a little bit of a pickle but he's got the infest so now he has become the enemy team for a little bit nice good play there by the life stealer middle escape tower although is under attack. again it's going to be this pressure down here bot nabi starting to ramp up a little bit and sinking almost has his blink dagger yeah that's what i was saying it's like he's gonna get farm in this lane yeah because even though it's hard to pressure the troll directly, the troll can't really pressure you that much either. Especially when you have the IO like walking around claiming bounty runes, coming back bottom, giving you the HP and mana that you need to, to stay in the lane. Burrow there on the Legion, realizing they don't want to stick the troll in this lane any longer. And Sasha might try and see if she can clear through this stack. Does have three two points in the overwhelming odds. Burrow strike though, steal some of it away. He's kind of chasing LeBron there, but not going to be able to get him. I'm still kind of waiting for the, the big spells to come out from Mavi. No reload yet. Uh, no spell steal on the Rubik. And we haven't really seen... Has DP actually used Exorcism at all yet? I don't think so. It's kind of just been like trying to lane against the Pugna as much as it can. Burrow strike away again. General going to be there with the Cursed Crown. They have duel available, trying to get within range. They've killed, but it's not going to happen. They don't have the damage yet. Yeah, there was pretty low chance that he would have gotten enough to get that kill. But in the meantime, they do find Dendi in the mid lane. They're going to find LeBron too. Talk about that exorcism. There it comes out, and he is going to die. Right click comes through. Double kill there for it, and with the Troll Warlord coming in as well. Potentially going to be a good bit of damage on the tower. There's just so many like kills happening that I, I like. I see a troll and a, a death prophet mid, and I'm like, how do they kill a hero? You know what happens that you actually kill the the pugna of yeah. all heroes? Uh, and Navi trying to get in a position to defend this, but that means that they can maybe wrap around and go up towards the top side where they have found themselves crystallized. But not anybody in the Radiant's area quickly enough to make any type of move. Attack. Blink is there for Sand King. But nobody home to try and defend mid yet. Radiant he, he's walking in. Fortified. They're wrapping. Navi. Thinking about going Radiant's here. The tower's tower down though. and well, Radiant realizing it. They run into Sashlo. And that should be a dead Legion Commander. Still running. They get to sleep, actually. This might actually end up turning around for him. The Earth Splitter, the fear. Yes. They make it work. Oh, God. Sand King's down. E.T. Oh, baby. 
LeBron's going to probably pay for his life, but he at least gets the kill on the Legion Commander. But so much damage there. And now LeBron finally going to fall, it looks like. They got the stomp for him. They got the punish. And they give the kill to Willow. I'm telling you, man. This team, they play a good Elder Titan. You should ban it. <laughs> like, you should definitely ban it, because there's no other hero in the game that turns that fight like that, except for him. Man, at first it seemed, like, really cool, because the Legion walks, like, right into him. It's like, okay, we stacked our CCs, maybe we still get him. You know, Shatchelo ends up walking out because he's super fast due to hitting the three-man overwhelming odds, gets the phase out, and has uh, an 11 charge one. And then all of a sudden, all three of them are just taking a nap, and you go, oh no. This is where it gets really bad for us. Because yeah. they didn't actually have any vision of the area. They were just going for the smoke on the high ground because they wanted to try Radiant's to go for the rap, like you were saying. And they had just getting like a huge counter initiation play on them. And oh, that was painful. Yeah. And now you suddenly get into this situation where the Dark Willow is level seven. Like she has caught up so quickly and is going to try and walk away. The spirits, though, will find the kill. Lil picks it up. And now, Rest of Heroes rotating in. They have the Pugna Ward down. They get to sleep on a three. Yet again, Crystallize is isolated away from the rest of his team. Starting to fall down low, but they want to go for the bigger fish. They're trying to take these guys down. The life drain, it's doing a lot, but not as much as the Spirit Siphon. You will set for lift up. They get the dual win. How do they keep doing it? The Elder Titan, dude. Every time. His stomps are hitting three heroes, and now they're just going to lose LeBron because he's casually sitting behind the tower and they do want to try to go for the pickoff, but ends up eating a silence and can't get the Fade Bolt in time to kill the PP. Ooh. Man, this is a rough one for Navi now. There's so many things going wrong for them. The last couple of moves they tried to make have just completely, like, 100% backfired. And this is going to give Troll his Battle Fury, most likely, as well. I mean, you talk about how well it was going for them. It wasn't like a substantial lead, but it felt like it was going to go somewhere. And then the team fights in these last couple of minutes have just been ca catastrophic. Well, they know that Exorcism is down now. So this is the point in time where they can make a, a concerted effort to get a tower. And they know they're, they're not going to get just like trounce because of it. So you can see like Crystallize is playing very aggressive. They got the jungle ward down. They're going to be able to see the other Titans movement. So they know that they're not going to defend the tower. And this is a good move, because you do have a Pugna. Radiant's like, Pugna wants to claim pretty much every single Otter Tier tower, basically before 25 minutes. Like, yeah. you want all those towers dead, even one for the, the Aether Lens, so he's going to be able to even siege a Tier 3. And that's the, the beauty of Pugna, is he can pretty much do what Sniper does to towers before Sniper can do it. Right. You can blast from out of tower range when you have that item. Radiant's bottom tower is under Looking for a catch here. They have pressed the attack though. Get the Shadow Realm off. They're still pressuring this tower. Or down on the high ground as well. And while this is all going on, they do need to be aware. Actually able to find the duel there, and they're gonna catch and kill off Sand King most likely. Or Splitter comes out. He does manage to get the escape, but only for a second. While this is going on, mid lane is being pressured by Troll Warlord, and he's almost got that battle fury. Just needs the void stone. Alright, he just looked at an arcane rune and left. Oh, he wants to leave it for the DP. That's a good play. Wow. Yeah, he's gonna leave it for the, the DP because uh, Exorcism just came back up. And they're gonna try to just smoke, I would guess, straight to top. And then, uh... Could they Roche with it? They could, yeah. They could do either. They could kill top tower or they could kill Roche. But it looks like right now they want to try to force a Lifestealer back, maybe even kill him. Need to be aware of that infest. And the Terrorize comes out. They get the Silence and the Fear simultaneously. He is gone. So quickly, he just blows up and couldn't get the infest off. Yeah, really nice movement. I think if SM has two characteristics that make them strong, one is that they have a crazy good Elder Titan, and two is their their movement when they make it, like smoke plays is always good. Very, very solid. And the thing too is like, it's not as if Navi is a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. They're not playing as well as we've seen them at some of the past events, but they're still pretty solid, and I'm really impressed with SM. I want to see this team at, uh, you know, later on in the qualifiers, obviously, no matter what happens this game. Um, but Navi, by no stretch of the imagination, are out of this one either. So what's that What's that path back into it for them? They need to do some, like, reloads with the, the Lifestealer plus one. 
So maybe the Sand King. I think when they kill or when they went for the kill on the the Willow Bottom, it was the Sand King. We was invested inside, and they just blew him up. That's pretty much how they win fights. They get on a hero with a life stealer and a blink dagger, and they just destroy him in like one second. Looks like right now he's going to be infested into Lil, which is definitely not what you would expect. So they're going for a surprise play that definitely has some some shock value behind it, because you're you're expecting him to be in the Sand King. Right. You're not expecting him to be in the hero behind the Sand King. Uh, maybe going to go on a relocate play down bottom. It looks like that might be the call. But meanwhile, over to the side, they're going to be trying to catch this Legion Commander Burrow Strike. Everybody's there. The Stomp going to connect on to two this time. And the Earth Splitter goes out as well. They pop the Shrine. They turn to fight. He got rooted. He's going to get feared. They're all running the wrong direction. The Epicenter immediately going to be interrupted by the Yules. So the Burrow Strike comes a second later. And they're going to take down General. Oh, that Yules. Great play there by Leana. Now they're going to end up losing the Rubik as well. It all comes up SM. That was actually... That was a reload where they knew that they, they were going to be fighting multiple heroes because they had vision. Like prior to the fight, they had a ward down. The uh, SM dropped a sentry to D-ward. But they had pretty much vision of the entire area. And they still lost. Like that That is definitely not a good sign. Really nice uh, use of the Yules there to prevent the Epicenter from dealing a lot of damage. It stopped General, like you said, from getting a stun. And after that, it was just the fight's done. Like, your primary team fight utility is already gone because your Epi was kind of lackluster. And you lost your Life Stealer pretty much as soon as he, he got in there. Like, it's Rage War off and he's done. And now, they're just going to pop Exorcism. No fuss, no muss. They are going all in for this Roche. And Navi thinking about ways to try and stop it. They don't have Epicenter right now. Everybody caught in the Prampled. And they're going to throw out an overwhelming left afterwards and tell Navi to get the heck away from our Roche. Has fallen to the oh my goodness. Andy, this ain't looking great at all. Navi. Yeah, it's, it's not looking good. Definitely not looking good. Because the Life Stealer Troll matchup is a no-brainer. The troll destroys Life Stealer, like especially in the later game when you have uh, enough like armor and HP to be able to stand there and just hit him. Because eventually you're gonna get a bash, and as soon as you get that one bash, he's just dead. There's like nothing you can do about it. Um, and like the, the same can be said for like the Pug in the later game. It's like yeah, he transitions okay, but like realistically, you want to be hitting like tier threes right now at the very least. Have like the rest of the tier twos on your radar and, and actually be able to siege them, but. It doesn't Radiant seem like that's going to be the case. It doesn't seem like they're going to get that chance. Yeah. So they do see the Life Stealer make his move down here. Uh, a couple of wards in the area. The Dark Will is going to walk uphill towards them. And meanwhile, the Dire do not spot out Yume yet. They Radiant are going to spot her now. Is under attack. But it looks like... Dyer are scanning. Yeah, they're just going to give up that tower. Top Probably the right falling. decision. Instead, push up top, Radiance get these waves shoved out, under go for the second round in a little while. I don't think Navi had like any intention of trying to take a team fight right now. Yeah. The crazy part to me is that General had like what a nine minute blink dagger, yeah. and it's almost twenty minutes in, and he still doesn't have a four stop. That means that he's been roughly farming two hundred GPM for the past ten minutes. That's nuts. It, that's like going from having a godly early game to just nothing. And even right there, it, it's it it doesn't feel like they really have the vision that they need to understand the movements. Like ET completely alone there, Sand King runs into him and then blinks away. Obviously, we have the benefit of having all the vision in the world, but that's really what you need out of these other supports is getting the wards down so you know when you can take a fight in certain places or not, or know when you can find a pick off. Yeah, they're just really scared because they understand the position that they're in. Yeah, the, the, the team fights have not favored them like at all. And even though it's only a 3k advantage, it's not the fact that the advantage is big or anything, it's just because of the hero matchups. Yeah. Like Elder Titan, Troll, late game, especially when you have another hero like DP to just supplement that physical damage and just chase people down, it's it's not something that Navi are really going to be able to deal with well. Like Rubik doesn't scale that well against their team, you know, Pugna doesn't, the Io doesn't, Sand King doesn't. There's going to be a pipe probably coming out on the... Uh, Oh, he actually went hood and is Radiant's going straight into BKB on the Death attack. Prophet. And what happens when the troll gets a BKB? How do you kill anyone? Yeah. 
Need to isolate somebody, which just doesn't feel like it's going to happen. Meanwhile, Duel, they relocate him away, so Crystallize lives for the moment. And they're going to be sticking around this area while the relocate wears off. Jump forward, looking for more, trying to take down that ET. Not going to happen. Terrorize throws it out. On to two now. And now the walk away Cursed Crown going to be taken off as well. This is all going on while bottom lane is pushing, though. And now the Earth Splitter comes through on to two. They're dead. General need to get the hell out of Dodge, but they're able to find the Burrow Strike. Trying to run, trying to hide. It's like he is going to escape. They lose the Dark Willow for the Rubik. And Navi going to be thanking their lucky stars for that. Dude, this ET is killing it, man. Every time, every freaking time I see this guy play ET, he arms. I don't know if it's just a hero or if he's just that good at it. Right. I'm sure it's a little bit of both. People have been saying ET is good for a while now. Yeah, he's, he's definitely strong. But he's one of those heroes where it takes time getting used to Radiant's like his mechanics. Like landing stomps is not as easy as he's making it look. Oh boy, that is a dead freaking legion. Yeah, need to get the heck out of there. Although it does make room for everybody else to show up and now Troll Warlord showing down and trying to run down, crystallize the sleep that's everything's there. He's dead. God. Dendi? He's just gonna try and blink away. Yeah, he's got the please don't touch me build right now. The four staff <laughs> blink dagger. You just <laughs> decrep yourself and just haul ass out of there. I like you say, he's a quick little guy. 485 movement speed right now. That's before he gets his boots to travel. You mean 385, right? That is definitely what I meant. I was like, 485? What the <laughs> heck else does he have that I didn't see? That's insane. It's uh, still very early morning here. Um, but yeah, they are trying to go for an epicenter. Going to connect onto Dark Willow to lift the kill. And they also have Shadow Realm now on Rubik. Silver Linings after they lose the It's power. actually, it's pretty good this game for him because it basically means a troll can't kill him. Yeah. So like, he gets ran at by someone, he pops Shadow Realm and maybe steal another spell in that time. It's not too bad. All right, what's the dream steal? I guess it's exorcism. It's probably the absolute best one he can get. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of ET stuff is kind of like you need it all together to make it work. Um, I guess terrorize is pretty cool too. Yeah, terrorize would be nice, mainly for the the crowd control aspect. But the other thing too is the reason why terrorize is so strong in Willow is because she has her own disable that synergizes with the terrorize and the brambles and you don't really have that so if you just terrorize and they're all running away and it's like okay wait we can't stop them and they're just running away then it kind of loses its value you know smoke up caught themselves a dendy and the terrorize it does not end up connecting they're still chasing here rubik in some trouble does have that shadow realm still the root's gonna be there though and he is going to drop so much for the shadow realm he just got sent to the actual shadow realm <laughs> He just lives there now, forever. Yeah. I don't know, it just, it feels like it all happens so quickly and Navi are like spread out across the map and I guess that they're sort of having to fall back into like split push backup mode, right? Like they're all going for boots of travel on these heroes and I guess trying to push out the waves without getting caught whenever possible. Doesn't feel like the yeah. draft went the way they wanted it to. That's Whoa. a nice one. Yeah, that's a good kill. Like, getting the Legion is nice, but uh, the the main issue is just the limitations of their draft. Like, they know that late game is going to be really tough to play, because they, they have a way of getting around the map in the aisle, which is fine. But taking a full-fledged team fight, it's, that is very hard to do with their heroes. And they, they're not going to have, like, the scalability. We talked about how, like, Elder Titan, Troll, like, Legion has scaling, DP is, is very good during late game as well, speaking of. Trying to go for the kill here in general, but not going to succeed. But yeah, the, the fact of the matter is, their heroes just don't translate well the later the game goes. They're trying to make these plays and they're not working. So when the plays aren't working, then you decide, okay, well, how do we keep the game going? And that's split push. So we see the DP uh, casually yields herself instead of sanking. But mm. it, it gets to a point where you know you can't win the fight. Yeah. And when you can't win the fight, your only option is to do what they're doing right now, which is just run around and split. Might just take one of those fights that they're forced into, where suddenly they're going to be losing towers in the high ground and 
not really have a great answer, particularly with this troll BKB. No answer for him right now. Uh, do you like the blink next for him? Is that that type of a game? Oh yeah, definitely blink dagger. Because it, it allows you to get on the targets that you want. Like the IO has a mech, so he doesn't have a way of really mitigating the damage the troll can deal. Like mech is only going to offset a little bit. If you get stunned, you're dead. Yeah. If the troll gets on you and uh, he's able to hit you for even like three or four seconds, a mech is not going to save your life. You need like Glimmer or Force Staff or Ghost. Those are the things that would keep you alive against him. So it's nice to be able to just go on the back, BKB, pop the IO immediately so there's no reload and then you just take the fight from there. The Spirit moving along the side here. They spot out Dendi, but they don't want to go for him. Again, defending their lanes, taking it easy until Roche responds. Still two minutes away before he comes back up. Other things that they can keep on doing, you've got like, you know, the Heaven's Halberd on the Lifesteal or some of that evasion. They still got great pickoff potential with Lil if they can find relocate ganks, but it's been mainly the Radiant just sticking together. And actually, I might have an inkling that the Lifestealer is up here as they're getting ready to walk up to the high ground. They spot him walking away, and this should be a quick duel and a kill as they bedlam him and he's gone. What a hell of a team, Jackson. That was a very nicely timed smoke there. Very hard to anticipate they're going to be walking up at that particular uh, that particular place. That being said, though, bottom is pushed out really far. It should have been kind of obvious that something was going on because no one was showing to defend that lane. And it looks like it's going to be a walk down mid. We've seen this one before. And while this is happening, they're taking some building damage. But I guess that they feel like they can't fight right now. Tier three tower is definitely going to go down and maybe going to be able to go for more right now. Depending upon how this goes, Navi still don't have any great answer. They're trying to split push and force them back. There isn't anywhere else to go besides tier fours now, and they're going to TP back home. Try and stop this pressure before it comes out. Top lane is also pushing in, and the tier three tower is almost gone. They have caught themselves one. It's going to be Lil, who's going to be stomped, and should be a kill there. He's trying to run nowhere left to go, but also on the other side, they're able to find the duel and kill off the Sand King. He's dropping in. Well, they get the Yule Scepter trying to escape from this. The overwhelming odds is not going to connect, and General gets out. I mean, Navi did the, the best they could with the situation they were given, right? They lose the, the Life Stealer to a smoke. He has buyback, but when the uh, entire enemy team's like barreling down mid with ghosts, you really don't want to take that 5 versus 5 engagement. Because if you lose that one, the Life Stealer is not only going to be forced to buyback, but the game just ends right, right there. Because after that, you know, Crystallize having a dieback would mean triple racks for sure. Or at the very least, they take the tier twos and, or maybe just go back to Roche at that point because they guess it would just spawn. This but, will do nice. Yeah, they, they almost got the tier threes in both side lanes for Navi, so that's a silver lining. Oh, but, oh, General oh. just canceled his epicenter. It's still going to be a kill under troll. That's big. And he doesn't have buybacks to try and contest for Roche. Don't know if he would have wanted to anyways, but this isn't Roche for Navi. Have they found a way back into this game? Well, there's no ghost just yet. 40 seconds. The other Titan's alive, though. And when other Titan's alive, it's always scary to do this. They also have a Terrorize available to them. And yeah, this is Navi realizing you can't actually go in. Stomp is used, though. And they're going to back out. Ready to go in again for a second round. Troll up in 30. And see, this is the part that hurts. Their team is actually so bad at killing Roshan that just having the Elder Titan alive is enough to stop them. And DD spawns, Gaben smiles on them. <laughs> Maybe this is enough? All right, there, they're thinking about it. Life Drain going on as well. And it looks like SM don't realize that this is happening. It's falling too quickly. They're not going to get there in time. ET, ulti, and everything not going to be there. That was a really lucky DD. Like, Okay, wow. another duel coming in. That was odd. Yeah, he was uh, not with his team. Rambles down. Attempted chase. It's not there yet. They're still looking, but not finding. So, Radiant right now. They don't have Aegis, don't have Cheese. Do they still feel confident trying to take fights? Yeah, I think so. They got uh, they got AM disc on the Death Prophet. The Troll Warlord now has his blink, and he's still got that 10-second BKB. Hasn't even popped it one time. 
once the duel's back up, you know, they can just pick off a hero, or maybe they just decide, okay, let's just go back instead, because we got the people pushing them bottom. Like, the, the options are pretty much whatever they want. Oh, God, he's so dead, General. Goodbye. Oh, oh, relocate! Oh. Oh. Wait, no, they only relocated him, like, 10 feet! What? Uh, he was dying so fast, I didn't think he was going to get the reload on time. He got him at, like, one health. Yeah. Well... Will ends up sacrificing his life. I thought General was still going to die in spite of that. <laughs> he just barely anywhere with the relocate. I mean, when that happens, you have to react really fast. So, like, the fastest thing you can do is just reload, like, right pretty much where you are and, like, tether to him and, and bring him back to where you were. So that way it breaks it to a little at least. Yeah. I'm amazed he got him out of there. I thought for sure he was going to die. Yeah, it was super close. Well, 6,000 net worth lead still going for the Radiant here as Navi trying to find a way back into it and Radiant trying to close this game out. It's been sort of always feeling like it's right on the edge of being their game to take and just hasn't ended up working out over and over again. They did get that mid lane of Barracks. They've cleared out one of the tier twos and now going to take the other one. But they need to wait another couple more minutes before the Aegis expires. And in the meantime... Dendi stuck in a bad way, and the Bedlam, the everything, he's just gonna drop, he's gonna die, and they get the duel. <laughs> Willow is one of those heroes that uh, does not care about Decrepify. It will actually just make Bedlam hurry that much more. Yule's on top lane, the Bronx. Got that man caught, trying to run away. He has his axe and throws it back at him, but another kill, and... Know your weakness. And Navi just being pulled apart. The strength of each of these heroes is too hard to deal with. Bottom lane? Nah, it's a Shadow Realm TP out. I would actually like to see Crystallize just go for the Bloodthorn in this game instead of going for AC. Like, I know he wants AC because it's a Death Prophet and a Troll, and also it's good against the other Titan because of the natural order. Like, it makes sense as an item. Dyer's but I really think that they need something that's attack. going to really get a kill. Like, you can nullify the Troll, and that's fine. And he can't BKB, and I guess that's what they're relying on to ensure that they can they can actually get the kill. But at some point, I think he needs to himself do enough damage to be a threat. And I'm not sure if AC is going to make him uh, be that threat. Yeah, or like you know, other help from his other heroes too. I'm thinking about like Rubik stealing. <laughs> like honestly, it feels like they need some of the radiant spells. Uh, like <laughs> terrorize. Talking about exorcism earlier could be another one. It, because right now, they, they just they don't feel as strong at all. Um, and it's going to be a Blink Dagger next on Dark Willow, too. So this she's going to be able to nicely. get really up in there. Yeah, that, that hero can do a tremendous amount of damage. If you get the, um, the full combo off, even without uh, the Veil, it's, it's somewhere in the 2000s of damage. Like, if you get every hit of Bedlam, and then the, the Shadow Run plus the Bramble, it's just, it is nutty damage. Everybody spread out from Navi. General likely to die here. They have Blink Hex available on the Death Prophet. Dyer are Although scanning. he is hiding off to the side. They do hit a scan here, and now realizing where everybody is, General going to die. He gets turned into a piggy. Dual Scepter. Burrow. Trying to play his way out of there. Oh, General, no but the urn. Yeah, they got him. The duel is coming out. That was a nice attempt, though, I gotta say. They didn't notice the gem. Right. Oh, there we go. Now he sees it. No. Head lane. No duel here, but they do have the Terrorize. Spears them out. Silence to follow. They have the Hex. The Cursed Crown. Oh, the Relocate out. Will again saving the day. Yeah, he's going to be sacrificing his soft, squishy body for the, uh, <laughs> the Life Stealer. It's happened a bunch this game. But I mean, hey, it gets the score out. It's really all that matters. The problem is, they're going to be probably both forced to buy out here, and they haven't even had to use the Exorcism yet, so... Yeah, there's buyback number one. But without a reload, what does the IO actually do? Yeah, not a whole lot. Um, overcharge, I guess. 
I can try and help people out, Burrow Strike. Life Seal is out there as well, but guess what? They're able to force him away, still alive for the moment, and that was the initiation you wanted so badly. And now they have the sleep as well. Four Staff trying to keep Crystallize alive, but Troll is on top of him. The Hex came out as well. They're able to isolate, but not enough to bring him down. Dual Win is going to be there for General. They take him down as well. I think with this PKB wearing off, though, Troll is going to end up falling. They're doing enough damage. Denny is doing it all. They take them all down. The cores are gone pretty much. And now Denny looking for more. found Yume. There's the Decrep as well. Trying to run away from him with this Glimmer Cape. But it's not going to be enough. Four dead. Nobby hold. That was a really kind of... I don't know what the word is. Uh, disjointed team fight from, from uh, SM. Because they go in. The troll BKBs. He goes for the Life Stealer. Everyone else on the team goes for the Sand King. And the duel should be on Life Stealer in that situation. Like, even if that guy gets off an epicenter, your trolls BKB'd anyway. The, the Life Stealer needs to be the one that dies, or even the Pugna. I don't think you can afford to go for the duel on that hero in that situation. I mean, they, they got the damage and everything, which is great, but, you know, they, obviously we saw the result of what happened. They ended up losing almost everyone. Yeah, that was really, really rough. And Na'Vi looking good again. I... They've got all these buybacks available. You don't want to have to use it so close to them respawning. But I'm going to deal so much damage with the Life Stealer. They're going to lose the lane of Rax for this, I think. Unless, now they relocate. They're bringing in everybody. And they're just going yeah, to try and force they don't wanna, They don't want to commit buyback. Like, it's, it's dangerous to buy back in that type of situation where you're all really low cooldown anyway to respawn. Because you want the buyback to make sure that you can all in... Or, or fight for the Roche or something like that to be able to, to secure the victory. But when you buy back in a situation like that, you're putting yourself in a spot where it's like, okay, now if we get picked once, the game's just done. Yeah. And you don't want that. It's, so it's better to go down one set of racks than it is to buy back and try to keep your entire base alive, get picked and once, and then get Well, previously, we saw up there in the top push in game number two, SM fall apart after they lost a fight like that. This one didn't feel as bad as that other fight, but you do have to wonder, how are they gonna to respond to this setback? And more so, how are Na'Vi gonna keep up this momentum? I think that they're, that SM are still probably feeling confident that they should be winning the fights. Like that was a kind of a one-off, I think, when they were diving in the base, like I said, different focus. Like the, the troll was like running around panicking, like, oh God, why is no one going on the, the life stealer? And then he decides to commit when it, clearly wasn't a good idea. Well, they got him this time, as Crystallize dies very rapidly through everything on him. And with that, yeah. Roche up in 20, they're gonna think about going mid though. Go for that last lane of barracks, or rather top lane of barracks. They wanna force a buyback, but they're gonna have uh, split pushing Dyer's problems here in a second. Okay, Dendi's TPing all. There's the buyback. Force the buyback, back attack. away. Go back for Roche maybe now. It's going to be up if they go and check it. No exorcism. It makes it a little bit scarier Radiance going for that. They have lost the tier 3 tower now top. I mean, yeah, this is definitely still anyone's game. I feel like it shouldn't be. I feel like Navi should pretty much be out of contention here, but... If they get this Roche... If they stay on it... I think they will. The ET is really far. The troll's not there either. Radiant scan. You may. He can throw down the terrorize if he wants. But Roche is falling quickly, and oh, now the pings come out. They know ET is gonna walk in the area. The fear it's onto all of them. The stomp it's gonna connect onto one. And troll goes in on top of that IO. He is dead. Crystallized. Also, he fall back. He can't afford to go down right now. They take him down. The chase is continuing. Curse crown on the LeBron. He stole the bedlam and trying to do the damage that he can, but it was never gonna be enough. And now an Epi. Is it gonna be enough to save their lives? I don't think so. Sashlo running. They can't quite get that kill on the west side of the engagement. It does look like they're able to escape with Dendi, but still, it's going to be the Sand King lifted up. Still escapes. General trying his best to just hold on, but they're going to lose Roshan here. I think that's just GG, honestly. Like, no buyback on the life stealer. You get Refresher Shard on the DP uh and cheese so two exorcisms back to back in 30 seconds time when the first one comes off cooldown I, I don't actually see how they'd have done this oh in general just ends up going down he was trying to cut the waves 
Dendi. I was wondering if there was maybe going to be a play towards the mid lane for the tier fours, but GG is called. No buybacks. They don't even get to use their abilities. And with that, SM move forward, and they're going to get a first round buy in the playoffs. I mean, it was well deserved. I think last game, they definitely had a chance to win, even though I felt like Navi's draft was better. This game, I felt like SM's draft was better, but Navi had a chance just because I feel like, you know, they're the more seasoned team and players and, and probably should be able to uh, to overperform and, and just win based on that fact alone. But man, SM, just ban Elder Titan against his team, please. <laughs> this guy just owns on a hero every single time. Like, he single-handedly turned this one smoke gank and multiple other team fights. I think there was like one or two bottom that happened as well where he just gets these stomps into just killing everyone. Yeah. I think giving this team this hero is just a huge mistake. Well, they take full advantage in this game number three, and I'm excited to see where they go forward from here. Uh, a lot more Dota to be played over the next several days. We've got CIS qualifiers continuing already. Vegas Squadron and Team Spirit are going to be in the semifinals matchup uh, for both of their, their, sec uh, their sections. Um, I do believe that this means that tomorrow we're going to have a Navi versus... Uh, Gambit matchup that's going to take place, and that will be an elimination match. I could be wrong about the, the matchups. That might be the, actually the other side of the bracket, uh, but we'll keep our eyes on it. Um, Andy, Draskal, thank you so much for tuning in. Any final shout-outs before we uh, sign off for this relatively early day? No, I'm, I'm good, man. Just uh, just some casting in Dota 2. It's fun to get back into the swing of things again, and uh, hopefully we got some more some more good games tomorrow. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. Again, you can keep following the tournament. It's the at Mars Media uh, for more tournament info at Beyond the Summit, at Lyrical Dota, at Draskal Dota 2, all spelled out in its wonderful glory. <laughs> and we'll be back again tomorrow for more wonderful action from the MDL CIS qualifiers. See you guys then.